Hello, everyone. Welcome to this is Ali Nissen. I'm joined by Dr. Emmanuel Alvaro. We're sitting here in the lecture hall at Harvard Dental School, and uh, Manny sharing some of his um, beautiful cases that he shared with us this morning at, with the postdocs and the faculty uh, at our uh, department. Um, and we're going to continue with the third case now. Uh, Manny, this is another interesting case of a traumatic um, incident for a pediatric patient. What had happened, the history of this tooth was the tooth was. Um, kind of submerged and it was impacted and they had to have a forced eruption for this maxillary uh, anterior tooth and then fall ensuing orthodontic therapy, right? There's a significant amount of apical resorption. So what happened that's, uh, with the That's what we think, but there was some sort of procedure done prior to the ortho and then after the ortho, during, this is at the end stage of the orthodontics, the bracers are supposed to be removed soon or soon after the, the, we took this radiograph. The oral surgeon, who was, uh, she was scheduled with the oral surgeon to have the tooth extracted, tooth number uh, 21 or nine. And the oral surgeon decided to send her my way just to take a look and see For a if consultation. I can do something about it instead of extracting. Yeah. I mean, it, it appears that there is only apical uh, resorption here. There's no coronal resorption around the tooth. No. Uh, there was some swelling involved with this patient. There was swelling and slight mobility. And slight mobility, and obviously. Uh, some tenderness. Was there also probing, periodontal probing? No, around no the probing tooth? at all. So that's a significant finding. When there is no probing associated with it, it seems like the tooth would have a chance to be saved, correct? Yes, I, I think so. I think periodontal. Uh, Loss of attachment is something to consider. That would be a significant diagnosis. negative yes. attribute, especially yes. with, a, with a smaller... But when there's no root. probing depth or loss of attachment, then it's more reassuring. Yeah, that the tooth for, at least has a chance yeah. here. Mm -hmm. So what did you do? Well, for this 12-year-old, what I decided to do is to go back, to go in, and this is actually a, a Panorex, but to take a CBCT. Right. Just where I was curious to see what the uh, what the problem was, and what the etiology is, and I noticed that the root canal, not yeah. the root canal, but the root looks like almost a banana. Right. You know, facing. So what's interesting here yeah, is that the yeah, the I'm short sure root is partially is due to some kind of a buckle, buckle curve, type like of a, a curvature. Buckle kick, right. Buckle kick going buckly, and the whole root, the whole canal is open. So it's an immature tooth. Right. It's not. This is not an incisor of a 12-year-old, and it's buckly, the curving buckly. So it's actually yeah. the apex is looking at us. There's an apical the hook towards yes. the, uh, the buckle. You see that sometimes yes. with canine teeth, actually, yes. maxillary canines that have that buckle kind of a hook. Or a um, primo, or, uh, upper molars, right. palatal root. And there may have been a function, that formation may have been in this tooth because this tooth had some forced eruption some, historically. Something, something so happened. that may have actually caused that. And do you feel also that may have been caused due to the fact that the, now you have a buckle perforation through the root and they may have, have well, been a the, part of the uh, devitalization uh, factors? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not we sure. don't know. I mean, but we're we don't know, but it was necrotic, point. infected. And uh, right. when I saw this CBCT, I was reassured mm -hmm. that allowed me to go ahead and go into more of the root canal endodontic route right. instead of sending her back to my the referring oral surgeon and send her back well. Yeah, yeah. So certainly at this we, point, again, yes. the absence of periodontal probing is a significant factor. Mm -hmm. The tooth has a chance if we can decontaminate it And completely. it's not resorption. It's just yeah. the appearance, the radiographic appearance of a periapical. But the CBCT is showing us the real story. Right. It's right. not resorption. It's just the way the root is curved. Okay, terrific. So what did you do? You did... So what I did, I cleaned right. with passive instrumentation because there's not much of the canal, the roots have very Fairly large are, yeah. are, are pretty large and then sealed it with the uh, bioceramic putty this is the facet putty again you just this put a, a thick, thick plug yes. of the facet I putty went in, in the, in used the a bit on the microscope but mostly right. plugged it in best i can and use uh, like a number 10 plugger place a ball of it in there and, and then, then or a cone and, and then, then use a number 10 with, plugger with college plug push a little cotton pellet push down push it down paper points as well help uh, inverted paper points they, they function as pluggers right mm -hmm. right and sometimes and then, one, of, one of the techniques that i use is that i may actually custom fit a gutta percha cone yes and then trim it five millimeters okay. and then I place the putty and then I use that trimmed portion to handle as the custom plugger oh, that's for the you have flexibility yeah so then yes. you can actually re completely push it to that length and you have a five millimeter plug of the putty 
them. So that kind of replaces the idea of the typical plugger is with a custom plugger, which is actually made out of gutta percha. That's, that's yeah, nice. so that's, yeah. it helps in yeah. that case. And then you backfilled it again with a uh, with then a glass. I placed uh, I placed vitro bond over the the putty mm -hmm. and composite, and right. then recommended not to remove the braces for at least four months, just for a wait and see for a four month period. Right. And these are radiographs about, if we look at the uh, time zone here, the, the timeline, we're looking at January, August, this is a year and a half post-op. I see her back uh, about a year and a half later, well, I saw her about three months after the procedure. I did not take radiographs, but clinically it was nice and asked her to come back afterwards for a follow-up radiograph. And these are 19-month radiographs. Yeah. And on the month, and clinically, mobility is normal, no discoloration, palpation, beautiful. Also, the, the, the tissues are so nice. Well, so, so now we're talking about a, from a 12, she's a 13, 14-year-old uh, right. young girl. And, and I think and at that point, you took a point, CBCT? Yeah, I took yeah. a CBCT. I just wanted to be sure. And they agreed for the uh, CBCT. And on the on the radiograph, we noticed that the we we noticed the putty actually right. extruding tiny bit of the apex. Tiny bit yeah. of the apex. Normally, we cannot. It's hard to get control yeah. unless someone were to <laughs> place your finger right finger. there at the apex in this yes. particular case, and uh, then the condense. <laughs> but it looks like it's it's condensed, and there's tissue actually reattachment all around, and the tissues right over that plug. The soft tissues around over that plug, I don't you, you don't see it. Yeah. You only notice it with the CBCT, right. and it's uh, well, it, 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 actually it's evidence of the, or at least in this case, the the evidence of how kind it is also to soft tissues. Yeah, I mean the biocompatibility of the material. I mean the set right. material is hydroxyapatite, which is the same mineral component in bone. So the biocompatibility studies by Dr. Kim and um, others at Penn, and, um, on dogs have shown cementum growing right over this material when it's extruded. So the biocompatibility is, is incredible in that sense. So I think this is a, a, a very interesting case and this is another one of those teeth that was referred for extraction and we you managed to, to save this tooth by basically applying some proper diagnostic judgment about the cause and the etiology of the problem and addressing the etiology rather than merely, you know, uh, addressing the manifestation by having a quick solution of extraction. So that's wonderful. So uh, that's a terrific case, uh, Manny, and uh, uh, let's come back and uh, do another case. Great. Thank you.